garment. That's why when she touched the garment, the virtue or the power of God went out of Jesus. Healed by using something. He did it in the days of the Apostle Paul when he went down in Asia. Bible talk about from his body, he brought forth handkerchiefs and aprons and diseases was healed. Amen. Oh, we have a great God. Amen. Hallelujah to God. If any man will come after me, will come after Jesus. Let him deny himself. Oh, you're going to do it his way. Let him deny himself. You're not going to do it the way your mega church told you. You can go after Jesus and still smoke and drink and gamble and party and all that trash. Oh, no. No, no, you can't. No, sir. You're going to do it his way or you ain't doing it right at all. Right. If any man will come after me, come after me. Let him deny himself. Let him. Let. Mm. Meaning the willingness to surrender, the willingness to give up, the willingness to give over, the willingness to give in. Nothing is done by the force. God won't put force on you. For he said, whosoever will. Let him come. Amen. Mm -hmm. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Then what? And take up his cross. Take up the cross. Choose the way of suffering. Take up. Take it up. Agree to suffer. And what? And follow me. Follow who? Follow me. Are you following Jesus, viewer? Are you following Jesus? You're not denying yourself them cigarettes. You ain't denying partying. You're not denying gambling. You're not denying going through the strip club. You're not denying none of that stuff. You're still out there with your makeup and jewelry and women wearing pants, men wearing dresses. You're remarrying, divorce, trading in men and women like someone trading used cars. Ain't no denial there. You're jumping from false church to false church, eating every wicked concept of the theory and the thoughts of men religion. Ain't no denial there. To pursue Jesus. It is not the concept of heaven on earth. To pursue Jesus scripturally. It is God's concept of being right on earth. According to his will. According to his agenda. Excellent. According to his purpose. Listen. If any man will come after me. Man, let him deny himself. Let him deny himself. And take up his cross. Take up his cross. And follow me. Follow me. You know a cross. Have all the directions of a compass. I want you to get me. North. East. West. South. All the directions of a compass showing you that all the areas of man must come under subjection to the nailing of the cross. Because the first direction that he have most problem out of is the north. The northern part of man is his mind. That's the northern part of man. You have more part of that, more problems out of that than any other part of your body. The northern part is where the mind is. Even when the body rests, your mind is busy. Body sleep, mind is all busy in your sleep. So the Lord made another recommendation in the second chapter of Philippians. To the apostle Paul, let this mind be in you. That's also in Christ Jesus. So when you let God take over your mind, God will bring the mental war on a subjection because the mind fight with the body. After Paul said, I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind. 
Only time there's a war with your mind is when your carnal mind receives divine information to free it or liberate it from its fleshy thoughts. And now you're trying to think according to the spiritual mind of scripture, but now your body want to act out according to the fleshy emotions of the body. So now the body is in conflict with the mind. Two laws is there. That's right. The law of God is in your mind and the law of the flesh is in your nature. And the law of God wants the flesh to come under to the spiritual mind and the law of the flesh wants the spiritual mind to leave. The law of the flesh wants the spiritual mind to leave me alone. Leave my body alone. Have you ever got to a point you want to do something so bad and then a scripture come to your mind that condemns or contradict what you do? Even though you know it's an act of mercy, you get mad at the fact that that scripture came. It make me think. <laughs> it made me think of one of my brothers in Baltimore and I'm pretty sure he's listening. I'm pretty sure he's listening and watching. Yeah, he gave me a testimony one day. He said, brother, he came to me one day and said, when are you going to leave me alone? I said, what you talking about? I don't see you. I don't live with you. He said, brother, this happened years ago. He said, brother, you, uh, he said, that thing you preached, he said, I was in bed with the woman, about to perform my services. <laughs> uh -huh. He said, when I got ready, this was before the woman knew who I was. This was before the woman heard of me. And he said he was getting ready to perform his services of sin. And he heard my voice just loud and clear, bringing the word of God in his ears. And he is there with the woman, yelling, leave me alone, man. Get out of my head. Get out of my room. It ain't no woman going to want to bother with you at that time. Because she going to want to know what's going on. What's going on? Who are you talking to? That was wonderful. When he told me that, I said, that was so wonderful. He said, man, it was a wonderful. I was ready. He said, he said everything on me just died. I said, now you know how God wants you to be to sin. Bible talk about being dead to sin that we live no longer therein. See, when God made Adam, Adam had to become a living soul. He made the body without soul. It was a dead man first. What was God doing? Showing you man's end by introducing man's beginning. The first shall be last and the last shall be first. So when he made Adam without spirit, it was just a body of clay there. Dead. Didn't become alive until God breathed in it. So when you're in sin, you're dead in your sins. You need the Holy Ghost to resurrect you from the dead. To give you life. And when God, hallelujah, step in. Throw it by the word. To resurrect you from the death of your sins. He'll give you life. And give you a desire to live for him. And the more you live for him. You kill your will. The closer you get to him. The more you're dying. And remember. In order to die right. It is written you got to be killed all the day long. So you got to have an assassin. That's right. Excellent. You know, because there are parts of us that want to die. So God hire a shooter. Sharpshooter. And his scope is with the scriptures. But we take God and the word of God never miss. I don't care where you hide. God get a preacher. And uh, scope you out. 
When that shot is fired, you can be way on the other side of the planet, but you will get hit. One scripture says, you shall be shot and wounded. And it hits you. Anytime, anywhere, any place, while you're doing anything. Thank God for the shooting of the scriptures. The objective is, save your life. One scripture says, from perishing with the sword. God come along and bring pain. By the pain and the hurt of scripture. To save our life from eternal pain. Listen at this now. In the book of Matthew chapter 16 at verse 24. That's right. Then said Jesus unto his disciples. Then said Jesus. You see Jesus is talking to his followers. And to those that want to follow. If any man. Will come after me. He's that, talking to both classes. Them man. that are the disciples. And then them that want to be a follower. Any man. He letting them know that are following. Well you got to continue to deny yourself. And them that want to follow, that never deny themselves, you might as well get started. That's right. If any man will come after me, will pursue Jesus. Let him deny himself. Oh, you got to deny yourself. And take up his cross. Take up the cross. Take up the way of suffering that kills all the dynamics of your being. Mm. What else? And follow me. Follow him. Now, nobody, hear me good, have ever followed Jesus in their life without following what the apostles preached. That's right. I don't care who you are. You can jump around and holler and skip around the floor of your church. It ain't nobody following Jesus until you follow what he gave his apostles. The apostles were eyewitnesses of him. They walked with him and talked with him and ate with him and handled him and witnessed his death and was there when he appeared to them after his resurrection. Thank God and was blessed to witness his ascension. Glory to God until they seen him no more. Was there in Jerusalem when the Holy Ghost came and filled the church. And they followed his teachings to the letter. Now viewers. If whatever teaching you have in your church, I don't care who your bishop is, how long you've been preaching, how long you've been saying he's a bishop, a pastor, an apostle, an elder, a prophet, an evangelist, a junior devil, an assistant hypocrite. <laughs> or that God can call himself whatever he wants. But if he's not teaching what Jesus gave his apostles, you're not following Jesus. Jesus told his apostles, he that heareth you, they hear me. He that hear you, hear me. You can't even hear Jesus unless you hear his apostles. I know many of you blind and deceive of the devil and think the words of Jesus are just the red letters in your Bible, you fool. From Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 22, last verse. That's all the words of Jesus. Why? Because Jesus Christ is God. That's right. And the Bible said all scriptures are given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, instruction, and righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished under all good work. So if you want your work to be all good, you got to come back to the teachings of the apostles who were the students of Jesus. Without them, yeah, yeah, you're not following Jesus. Listen, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Look at your baptism, viewers. Are you baptized like Jesus said? Matthew 20 and 19 and Acts 38. Are you baptized like Jesus said? I know many of you now are so happy. Hey, man, you point at the television and say, yes, Pastor Jennings, I'm, I'm baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. You are? You've been baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Yes, Pastor Jennings, I'm Jesus' disciple. I've done what Jesus said. I got baptized. The preacher took me down in the water and said, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. I'm not going to say I'm sorry to disappoint you. It gives me great honor. 
And it makes me feel happy to disappoint you. You ain't never been baptized. Anybody that are watching now, hear me good rascal. And the preacher says, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Took you down in the water, brought you up, and you came up wiping the water off your face, hands all shaking, and you're saying hallelujah all in the water, splashing. People trying to hold you, you fighting them. And you... That's going off in some tongue. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah. Some of you do the umbrella. Hey, yeah, yeah. Hey, you do the butterfly. Hey, yeah. Glory to God. Ha. All right, you butterflies. I got my net here to catch you. That's right. And ain't nobody in the world baptized right. If you've been baptized and the preacher said, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, he didn't obey Jesus. No. You were baptized wrong. Oh. Get me, get me, get me now. You listen to the old troublemaker. I want to educate you, teach you, so you can start pursuing Christ. Amen. Matthew 28, 19. Let's take our time. Because some folks say, why well, every time you preach this, everybody don't know. It's true. There's a song the old time used to sing. Everybody don't know who Jesus is. It's true. Everybody don't know. And everybody don't know. And there are a lot of sincere people getting baptized by the number Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And here come a man telling you over television and internet, it ain't none of you baptized right. All of you got baptized wrong who were baptized Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. You're all wrong. Your apostle that got it, your bishop that got it, your prophet that got it, your pastor, your evangelist, the first lady, the third mother in the church, the acting deacon, the junior elder, the junior apostle, the organ player, the drum player, all the choir members, every usher that walked the planet. If you baptized Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, you're nothing but a wet sinner. Get me? Amen. You didn't obey what Jesus said, and you didn't yet start following him. Now, I want to put you in pursuit of Jesus the right way. Excellent. Listen at this now. In the book of Matthew, chapter 28, and at verse 19. Follow me. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. That's what you need. Teach. You're running around your church like you're in the Indiana 500. Running. Running. Bouncing off ushers. Sometimes churches, the ushers are hold a circle. That's true. That's true. Amen. Ushers get together and hold a circle. Each old, each usher hold hands, and one is in the middle. You know, they so anointed, bouncing off each usher like an old pinball machine. Let me see where you bounce off Acts two thirty eight. Listen, Matthew chapter twenty eight and at verse nineteen. Let me show you what you did not see, viewers. Go ye, therefore, Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Teach everybody. Baptizing them. Do what? Baptizing them. How? In the name of the Father. Don't stop there, son. And Read on. of the Son. And of the Holy Ghost. Do you get this? Baptize them in the name of the Father. And, and of, of the, the Son, Son. And of the Holy Ghost. In the name. In the N-A-M-E. Not in the N-A-M-E-S. This is the way your lying preacher quoted. Your lying preacher, look at me now. Look at me, you Louisiana thing, you. Look at me. You got a liar for a pastor. And some of them are your father, your husband, your slap happy grandpappy, your uncle. It's true. He stood you in some water and said, I therefore baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Ghost. Ain't no Bible said that. The Bible never said that. Baptized the Bible didn't say name of the Father, name of the Son, name of the Holy Ghost. It didn't say that. Right. You add it to the Word of God. That's right. Listen at what it says. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name, in the name of, the Father, of the Father, and of the, and Son, of the Son, and, of the, Holy and Ghost. of the Holy Ghost. One name. Name is singular, but there's three titles there. Name of the Father. It's like my name is Jennings. But at birth, first title, son. Got married, 
Second title, husband. Wife and I got seven youngins. Third title, father. God made me a preacher. Next title, apostle, bishop, elder, prophet, minister, boxer, fighter, crippler, killer, murderer. Amen. Wonderful. I have a lot of titles. Oh, we'll take God but one name. One name. You out there got a lot of titles. Sinner. Hypocrite. Child of the devil. Wicked. Faker. False prophet. Liar. Deceiver. Son of Satan. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah to God. Great name forever. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Teach everybody. Baptizing them in the name. One name. Of the Father. Of the Father and, and of, of the, the Son. Son. And of the Holy Ghost. Now, Matthew 20, 19, there was no baptism being performed there. Nowhere. There was told to go do it. He rose from the dead and instruct them to go to Jerusalem. He said in the book of Luke chapter 24, and begin at verse 44, he rose from the dead and told him that these are the words that I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, that are written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and, and in, the, in Psalms the Psalms concerning, concerning me. me. Then, then opened he their understanding. Wait a minute. Now, 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 that shows me why the apostles knew what they were doing. That's right. Because Jesus opened up their understanding for what reason? That they might understand the scriptures. That they might understand. And they understood it. That's right. The apostles understood the scriptures. So he led them out as far as Bethany. Jesus did. Lift up his hands and blessed them. They went to Jerusalem from the mount that is called Olivet. The Holy Ghost fell there on the day of Pentecost. Then the apostle Peter stood up with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven. And declared by God's permission. Repent. And Repent. be baptized. This is Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. Then I want Peter, my viewers to follow me in the Bible. In the book of Acts chapter 2 and at verse 38. This is where Matthew 20, 19 was fulfilled. Matthew 20, 19, they was told to go do it. It wasn't done there. They was told to go do it. You know, if your father give you money and say, go to the bank and deposit it. When he give you instructions, you ain't at the bank yet. You have to go there and make the deposit. Jesus was giving his apostles instructions to baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And because they knew that name, they was able to do all baptisms in their name. Listen at this now. In the book of Acts chapter 2 and at verse 38. Follow me Baptists. Follow me Methodists. Follow me Pentecostals. Follow me non-denominationals. Follow me so-called apostolics. Follow me Episcopalians, Lutherans, Protestants, Catholics, non-denominationals. Practically every religion under the sun baptized Father, Son, and Holy Ghost and don't call the name. You didn't obey Jesus. Who? You. You ain't no, you, you talking to me? Yes, I'm talking to you. Who do you think you are? I don't care if you got a cross round your neck and a collar on like you got the Bible backward. I'm talking to you. And your mama. Yes, you and your mama. Talking to your daddy. I'm calling your daddy out. Calling your children. I'm calling your pastor out. Calling your second wife out. Amen. I'm calling your third husband out. Amen. I don't care what religion you are. You did not obey Jesus. From the Pope of Rome down. None of you obey what Jesus said unless you got the name. And the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is not Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. You want to take up the cross and pursue Jesus? You got to do it right. All right, give chapter and verse now. In the book of Acts, chapter 2, and at verse 38. Follow me. Then Peter said unto them, repent. Now that ain't what your preacher preached. Your preacher tell you, anybody want a church home, I give you a home. And then the music start playing and the choir starts singing for you. 
I am praying for you. I am praying, oh, for you. I am praying, I'm praying for you. That's the devil! <laughs> That's the devil out of hell! I don't care what that choir is saying and cause your tears to start jerking and your mascara start running and your fake eyelash start hanging and your lipstick is all mushy. Come on back to Bible! That's right. Come on back! Or it take God you didn't do it right. Excellent. You didn't do it right. You didn't do it right. Amen. Acts 238 says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent. Your preacher don't tell you that. He said, bow your head and raise your hand and accept Christ as your personal Savior. Repent. Your preacher tell you, pray a sinner's prayer. Anybody want a church home, come on up, I give you a home. Or you get a bunch of people come up or hold a hand of a bunch of fake elders. And all these elders got you repeating some fake sinner's prayer that ain't never been in the Bible. Lord Jesus, come into my heart, wash me, cleanse me, white as snow, for I'm a sinner. And then the preacher tell you either on television or radio or in the false church you're in. After you repeat that sinner's prayer, he tell you you're saved. You no more saved than a rooster can tap, dance, and entertain the White House. You're not saved. You go and pursue Jesus on his terms. And you got to do it like it's written. The Bible says what? Then Peter said unto them, repent. Repent. And be baptized. That's the first thing you got to do. After you hear the word of God, what it says? Repent. You got to repent. The first thing to do is after you hear the message of God, repent. you got to repent. What is repentance? It is written, godless sorrow. Worketh repentance unto life. When you repent it, you are convicted. Over there, God, conviction set in. About all the wrong you done. Repentance is not only something you say, first it's something you feel. Excellent. Yeah? Excellent. If you say I'm sorry, but don't feel sorry, that's not repentance. Hallelujah. Wonderful. I'm glory to Hallelujah. Wonderful. Glory to God. You have to feel it. That's what the Bible say. Godless sorrow worketh. It's working. It's working on your heart. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Repent. Repent. And you got to repent for all your sins. Bible ain't tell you pray no sinner's prayer. Listen, viewers, listen. That sinner's prayer ain't did nothing for you. You're still of the devil. You're still of the devil or out of hell. You're not saved. You're not born again. And you're not a so-called Christian. Unless you pursue Jesus like the word of God says. Then Peter said unto them, Repent. Repent. And be baptized. How much? Every one of you. How? In the name of Jesus Christ. That's the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Jesus Christ. Just like the name of this son, husband, and father is Jennings. I'm son, husband, father. Jennings. Three titles. Not three distinct personalities of Jennings. No. I ain't no schizophrenic. Are you getting what I'm telling you? He's bear the title father because that means he's the originator of creation. He bears the title son because he was manifested in the flesh and the flesh was a sacrifice for humanity. He bears the title Holy Ghost because his spirit comes to comfort and lead and guide you into all truth. Glory to God, and without the Spirit of God, you're none of His. Excellent. Without the Spirit of God, glory to God, you're not in the church. Or the Bible says you're baptized by one Spirit into one body, and it takes God to put you in His church. Amen. What did He say? Then Peter said unto them, Repent. And go back and look over how you baptized, viewers. Listen to Pastor Jennings now. If any of you, any of you that's watching me now, all of you that were baptized, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, you ain't baptized. You didn't obey Jesus. You're not baptized at all. You was tricked by a dumb preacher who did not have the understanding of what Jesus said. He just took you down and repeated. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost and brought you up and now you flapping your arms wet. You going to come back to the Bible. You don't, yeah, yeah, yeah. You won't find not one person, not one person 
and I mean not one in the scriptures that were baptized and the preacher said over them, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And you can't tell me that the apostles didn't obey Jesus. Jesus said, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And they went and obeyed them. They, everywhere, they, everywhere they went, they obeyed what Jesus said, but not once did they say over anybody, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. You know why? Jesus didn't say do it that way. He said do it in the name of. Right. In the name of. And because they knew the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, they performed it in the name of Jesus Christ. Excellent. One scripture said do it in the name of. The next scripture, they used the name. Then Peter said unto them, Repent. Repent. And be baptized. And be baptized. Every one of you. Every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. And for what? For the remission of sins. That's how you get your sins washed away. Then what else did he promise? And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now viewers, viewers, viewers. Everyone watching me now that are baptized and you in a Baptist, Methodist, Pentecostal, Lutheran, Episcopalian, Catholic, Mormon, non-denominational, and even some apostolics. You got to be baptized over. You got to go right back and get baptized over again because you're baptized wrong. Amen. Many of you that are Catholics now, you went to an upright bowl. And uh, the priest put some water on your little forehead. That's not Bible. I want to go right to Rome. Let me go right to Rome in the sixth chapter of the book of Romans and begin at verse one. Because we got thousands of Catholics and many of them are honest, many of them are sincere, and many of them really want to be right. But it don't change the fact you've been tricked, you've been lied to by some cardinal, some priest, some archbishop. You've been lied to. Who are you going to be more loyal to? The scriptures or a Catholic belief? Come on back to Bible. Amen. I'm telling the world, come back to Bible. Bible, come back, come back. You have left the scriptures and pick up the tradition of men, and you got to come back to Bible and pick up the tradition of God. That's right. All right.